If you look at a lot of these obscure niches where somebody's learned how to make some money doing something weird, here comes the money. There is almost nobody teaching people in that market how to make money. Almost everybody's teaching people in that market how to do the thing. And so you will win because there's a lot of demand and there's very little supply. I'm gonna show you a hack that is dumb, it's simple, it makes a lot of money, it's silly, it's obvious, a lot of people don't think about it, but if you want to, you know, kind of put a lot of stuff in your pocket that's green and has old people's faces on it, then this is your jam. And it comes for selling the shovel. And I think it's great that people sell shovels, otherwise you'd have to dig for the gold with your dirty little hands here. And this comes from my boy, Ed. So if you don't know, I have an email list. You should probably be on it. I don't know how you get on it. Figure out how to get on it. And a while back, I sent out an email where I said, if I could answer any question you had and make you a personal YouTube video with my answer, what question would you ask? And I got a ton of them, hundreds of them. I'm still parsing through them. And my boy, Ed, who I go way back with, he put in this and I thought it was very fascinating. He says, hey, Jason, you helped me promote a photography product in the past, gave me good advice and it helped me sell $50,000 in a month's time. That's my boy, good job, man. I didn't know that, by the way. I'm learning this now probably several years later. And he goes on and he says a lot, but here's the, the root of what he says and I'm gonna answer first. He says, do you think it better to market a product on how to make money as a photographer or how to become a better photographer? And the answer to that is pretty obvious. I think Ed even knows the answer to this. Teaching people how to make money with something is infinitely more lucrative and easier to do than teaching people how to be better at something. So it doesn't matter what it is. You could turn anything into how to make money with dot, dot, dot. That's practically under the sun. So let me preface this. I, I read this article several years back on this family who was selling roaches. And I think they were selling them on eBay or something like that. Live roaches. And they were making like $3,000 a month selling live roaches. And I said, huh, I wonder if they know the following. If they were to create a course Here's how to make, or here's how I'm making $3,000 a month selling roaches. They would make probably $50,000 a month teaching other people how to make $3,000 a month. If you discover some way in which you make a small amount per month, but it's consistent and it's easy to do, just a couple thousand dollars per month, you will make at least 10 times that showing other people how to do the same. And I think it's really important that you understand why that this case is. There's only a few things that you can sell out there that go to the stratosphere in terms of businesses that can just take off that practically have no ceiling to the amount of money that you can make. And selling money, essentially, is one of the best businesses to do that with in terms of scale towards near infinity. And here's some of the reasons why. So by the way, you could like it or you could hate it. Just like you could hate the fact that the sun rises in the east. Whether you hate it or not, it's still rising in the east tomorrow. Selling money at a discount is one of the easiest appeals for two reasons. It's so obvious, if you pay me money and you think you're gonna get more back than what you paid me, you're essentially not buying anything. You're getting something not even for free, better for free. And the further you believe that the exchange of money you give today will result in a lot more money tomorrow, the easier it'll be, the quicker it'll be for you to give that money and the more of that money you will get. Now, this is why there are massive regulations in financial markets, because people get kind of weird Here comes the money. and illogical and they get overly emotional in these situations where they believe, whether fact or fiction, whether it's the reality or not, if I can give you a little bit of money today and get a whole bunch of money back tomorrow, I'm game for that. And that's one of the reasons why it works so well. But here's another reason why it works so well is because you're marketing marketing, essentially. And so if people say, well, that guy's a good marketer. So if I would learn how to market from anybody, I should learn from somebody who's good at marketing. So your mere demonstration of your marketing is a sales point. And that's something you don't get in other markets, right? So something I would argue that is infinitely more valuable than making money selling photography would be, for example, say dealing with traumatic experiences how to process and move past traumatic experiences. Good luck building a $100 million business around that though, because it's abstract, it's not concrete. 
Same thing, by the way, with the photography, teaching somebody how to be a better photographer is hard to quantify. How do you know when you're better? Under what conditions is better? It's subjective, it's not objective. And the subjectivity will vary greatly from one person to the next. But if you could show, here's how I made 3000, that is objective and concrete in the sense of it's a finite number that everybody can understand and everybody can get. Now there's another reason why this works so well. And the reason why it works so well is supply and demand. If you look at a lot of these obscure niches where somebody's learned how to make some money doing something weird, here comes the money. There is almost nobody teaching people in that market how to make money. <laughs> almost everybody's teaching people in that market how to do the thing. And so you will win because there's a lot of demand and there's very little supply. So it is almost always better if you want to to put an information business around whatever you're doing, especially if what you're currently doing right now makes you money. And you might not think it's worth your time because you say, well, I only make like $1,300 a month doing this thing. Listen, if you can help somebody supplement their income with an extra thousand, two thousand dollars a month doing something that they're already doing anyway, they just haven't figured out the money equation on, it is insane the amount of people who will buy that product from you. And you will make so much money selling the shovel. Far more than you ever will be if you dig the gold for yourself. And this isn't a zero sum game, by the way, because if you teach other people who are not making money to make some money, they also win too. But I want you to think of any occupation. Any occupation you're in, you're in two businesses. So if you're a plumber, you're in the business of plumbing. You're also in the business of the business. So it doesn't matter how good of a plumber you are. If you can't get gigs, you are broke. And you could pick any category of any business and that person in that business has two functions. One, to be an expert at what they do and two, to be an expert at marketing. But unfortunately, if you go through those trade schools where they're taught a trade, or if you go through these different college educations where they're teaching a certain amount of expertise, there's this much paid to the attention of the business of it and the marketing of it. And there's this much paid to the expertise of it. And we were looking at buying a, a business one time that, that taught kids like an after school program. So if you needed additional tutoring, but you couldn't afford one-on-one -on -one tutoring, you come down to a learning center and you kind of group tutor these children. And one of the appealing selling points of this business, I'll never forget this. They said, hey, listen, we hire teachers that have big fancy degrees in California and we pay them about 18 bucks an hour. And I thought, damn. That's an opportunity because like, well, I'd pay them 40 bucks an hour and develop a system where their expertise could be utilized in a manner that could produce a way more compelling result, give them a better job. But I'd have to translate their skill set from over here, which is really solid into one over here, which had more economic value. But I'm thinking, what a ripoff. Here's somebody that went to school, probably bare minimum five years, probably more than that, spent an insane amount of money on their education. By the way, their education delays them getting into the workforce, so they lose experience, which is more valuable than the education. And then their prospects are, I can work for $18 an hour to apply my expertise. And we got very excited about that concept because we're like, we could, tie up all the talent in this market. We could pay 30 bucks an hour when everybody's paying you know, 15 to 20 bucks an hour, but we would run them through a rigorous process to find out who was the best that would stay. So we would accelerate because we would get so many applications we couldn't handle them all. I know we'd get hundreds of them and we just have to run it through to find the five or 10 that were the top tier that were the best. And then we would have an advantage that nobody else had. And that's kind of sad because, you know, I'm a college dropout. I did not complete my degree. And I do not know much about the formal education system because I spent the time balancing out the expertise initially to get enough to interface with real clients in the real world. And then through postmortems is where I learned most of my stuff. Meaning I try something out, I observed what happened, I would study it, then I would iterate it and try it again to the next client or the next opportunity or the next activity. That's hyper-focused, hyper-accelerated learning. So I think that if you are doing anything that's producing any amount of money, you should consider 
building a separate business that teaches people the specifics of how you're making that money and not just teaching them. Because if you're making money, you've probably developed things like contracts. You probably develop things like processes and you can give them that as well. It's already done. This is the art of leverage. Uh, I have a PowerPoint presentation and a keynote presentation that I use to develop all my webinars. And this is the kernel of something that has translated into over a hundred millions of dollars of sales. You could design your own keynote or I can give you mine. And that's why one of the programs that we have, I just give you the slide deck. I said, I start every single one of my webinars this way. And I've sold over a hundred million dollars with this one template alone. And here's the look and here's the feel and here's the design of it. So it's one less thing you have to do if you're developing your own webinars. And so you have these strategic byproducts that can be properly leveraged. Nobody else is, has them. Nobody else is offering them. So the, the short question with the long answer, Ed, is, is you sell how to make money with photography, not how to be a better photographer. There's a million courses out there uh, and they're all free these days, it feels like, on how to be a better photographer, but how to specifically make money as a photographer, that's where it's at. Now I wanna look through really quickly the rest of his commenting here. There's a couple of things that he said that I think are important to address because a lot of people think this way. When he says, you've helped me make as much as $50,000 in a month. He says, I know that's not too much compared to what a lot of marketers make, but it was a lot for me and some of the best results I ever had as a marketer. And I wanna address that right now. And so this is one of the reasons people talk themselves out of ever starting any business whatsoever. So say you got a side hustle, say you are making a little bit of money. And now you're like, huh, do I productize that? And you say, well, gee, people like Flathom, they talk about webinars that have made over a hundred million dollars. Yeah, I don't know, that's a lot. I have a little, don't do that. Instead, compare it to where you started to where you're at now. That's a much better way to feel better and that will create the right type of excitement for you to get down to business. Because there are photographers right now that Ed could help who he could make a lot of money for but right now you ain't making any money for. It. And so I think about that when I'm creating stuff. If I don't create this, who will continue to suffer? But if I'm thinking about myself and my deficiencies, then I'm not creating anything. But if I'm thinking about other people and putting the focus on them and not on me, then I can kind of, you know, I can do something with that, right? So that's the other thing I just want to address there. And I see this very commonly with my clients now is the best person you compare yourself to is the person who you were last year. And the comparison is what have I grown from? What do I now know that I didn't know before? So all of you, if you found a little side hustle or you found a way where you're making some money, document it and see if you can offer it to other people. And if you're worried whether you can bring it or not, make it free at first. But there is never, ever a time where I would turn down the ability to teach people how to make money doing something if I'm making money doing it. And I think all of the things that you do don't take for granted somebody somewhere else would probably pay you something for something you do right now. So give them the opportunity to and see what happens. There you go. Jason Flatland here. I'll see you in the next video.